In this video, we'll be talking about cellular aging. It's a slightly long video. If you spend your three minutes, you would be able to understand the overall concept. And if you spend the entire time of this video, you would have a detailed idea about cellular aging. We always wonder why do we age and what controls aging? Can aging be reversed or slowed down? These are the long standing question in humankind. Scientists are debating among our, th themselves to understand which part or organ in our body age at first. When we talk about aging, do we know that whether our heart age first or our liver age first? Or is it the all cells of the body age due to specific stress factors or environmental factors? Are there genetics involved in it? All these questions would be answered in this video. So there are several physiological traits of cellular aging and in this video we would try to understand how genomic instability, mitochondrial dysfunction, telomere shortening and damage, epigenetic changes, disrupted proteostasis, altered cell signaling, cellular senescence, and lastly, dysregulated nutrient sensing can affect the process of cellular aging. So all in all, these are the clinical uh, signatures or cardinal signatures of cellular aging. All these factors are included or involved in the process of cellular aging. Now let's talk about which genes are actually involved in the process of aging. The category of genes that are involved encodes for DNA repair enzymes, they encode proteins in the insulin signaling pathway, they encode components of the mTOR signaling pathway which regulates uh, translation, anabolism and many other metabolic fact, uh, processes in our body and also there are genes which are associated with chromatin remodeling enzymes. So all of these category of genes are associated with aging. If we take the example of progeria, which is a disease where aging is accelerated, we would see that there is a genetic mutation in LMNA gene or lamin A gene. This particular gene gives rise to the intermediate filament lamin A. Now lamin A works like a supportive sculpture to the nuclear envelope. So obviously when there is a mutation in lamin A gene, the product is not formed properly and there is a breakdown of the nuclear lamina. And as a result, there are several cells of our body, especially the stem cells, they die. And that leads to an accelerated aging in these individuals. Similarly, we can take the example of Werner syndrome. In this case, the WRN gene which encodes for a protein involved in DNA repair and maintenance. So obviously when this particular protein is not there, DNA replication stalls and overall repair process is hampered. In these circumstances, cellular growth and cellular division capability is compromised. That is how we understand that genomic instability is a key driver for cellular aging process. Now, the idea about aging is actually in the genes. And it turns out recent research found out mutation rate actually dictates the lifespan of individual. Initially, the Greek philosophers thought bigger the animal longer it lives. For example, a bowhead whale basically lives for 200 years, whereas a mayfly live only one day. So the size correlates with the age. But it's not true. Think about a clam that lives 500 years, but it's a very small, small particular organism. So age doesn't correlate with the lifespan or aging process. So what really correlates? And this recent article actually found out an answer. It turns out that there are specific mutation rate that dictates the lifespan. For example, these giraffe and this uh, mole, they have basically different in size, but their mutation rates are basically same. That is why this naked black mole and the giraffe has comparable lifespan. And this is one of the dramatic discovery in recent times. 
So now let's talk about another important cellular driver of um, aging that is cellular senescence. So senescence is a state of the cell where the cell undergoes permanent growth arrest and it loses its all capability to divide further. So cell growth and division capability is severely compromised in this cellular state. Now let's talk about hallmarks of senescence. So when we compare a normal cell with a senescent cell, there are different changes. For example, accumulation of lysosomal enzyme termed as senescence associated beta galactosidase is very prominent feature of senescent cells. So question is what really discriminates between these senescent cells and normal cells? There are many other criteria. For example, there are morphological changes. Senescent cells has abnormally large cytoplasm. So they have an increased cytoplasm to nucleus ratio. They are also flattened in appearance. Another obvious marker of senescence is the lack of DNA replication. Also increased level of P21 or P16 protein which prevents cyclin CDK complexes are also a hallmark feature of cellular senescence. People think that cellular senescence is a key driver for aging process. Now, this is how a normal nuclei look like, but in this case, in a senescent cell, the nuclei somewhat looks like this. This is known as nuclear senescence associated heterochromatin foci. So all the chromatin are condensed in a different way in these cases. Now, recent days, transcriptomic approach and proteomic approach has found out several drivers of senescence. So let's talk about the inducers. It turns out when there is a prolonged double strand uh, DNA break response, when there is a telomere shortening and damage, when there is oncogene activation, all these key induction factors can lead to an arrest of the cell division. And this arrest of cell division is a key feature of the senescence. So the senescence features include obviously, just to summarize, the senescence feature include nuclear associated heterochromatin foci, senescence associated beta galactosidase or SA beta gal. Then there are several particular uh, genes which are anti-apoptotic proteins such as BCL XL, BCL2, BCLW. All of their expression and all of their amount is increased in the cells abnormally. Also CDK inhibitors are upregulated in a senescent cell. ROS levels are key driver to, uh, to perform the senescence process and cellular aging. So now let's talk about dysregulate nutrient sensing. For any cell to grow and divide, it needs nutrient. When nutrients are not available, cell would not divide at all. It is now found as, so people have found out that now if the, if the rats or many model organisms are fed in a restricted diet known as alternate day feeding, then their lifespan has actually increased. And there are many research articles which suggest calorific restriction actually improves the health and overall lifespan in rhesus monkeys, flies or even mouse. So all these preclinical studies suggest that nutrient sensing and nutrient input where we eat and how, we, how do we eat the diet composition all can actually dictate our aging process. So there are a lot of evidences from the world. For example, the, the, uh, the uh, Okinawa Island people, the Hunza tribe in Pakistan, and also the, 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 another tribe in Andes, all of them has an average lifespan of greater than 100 years. But what is common between them? All of them spiritually or ritually followed the intermittent, intermittent fasting protocol. That means they have a restricted feeding pattern or restricted calorie intake pattern. There are many human studies which found out intermittent fasting is triggering weight loss and also improving cognitive uh, uh, benefits, giving cognitive benefits in patients. So question is why starving is so important? Because starving creates a stress situation on the body. So obviously when you are not eating, then there are a lot of uh, so the body has energy demand 
and how does body would uh, basically overcome that energy demand because no nutrient is coming from outside body would try to recycle what it has inside already and this process is known as autophagy so in this process non functional proteins or organelles would be uh, phagocytosed and degraded and that uh, bits and pieces would be used to synthesize new proteins so let's say under the uh, condition of starvation you need a functional enzyme so normal cases you would make it with the amino acids but when there is no dietary input in that circumstances you can't have external source of amino acids then how does amino acid i mean how does one can make functional enzyme that is required at that stressed environment autophagy is the key autophagy would break down non functional proteins or protein aggregates to get these building blocks and this would further help to build new enzymes or proteins that are required for cellular function that is why autophagy kind of recycles all of the existing products and that is working like an anti aging mechanism and it turns out that in alzheimer's disease amyloid plaques can also be uh, cleared out if autophagy is induced so these are still data from clinical preclinical trials so uh, many order of clinical trials are still left so when we need a functional enzyme um, the pro the enzyme first has to be created from the amino acids so this is known as protein folding then eventually the protein has to be degraded as well now proteasome mediated degradation or autophagic degradation is pretty common and if there is a problem in either degradation or synthesis that might lead to an aggregated protein so these aggregated protein are detrimental because they don't have they are not functional and they also prevent function of other proteins which are important for any biological processes so obviously clearing out these aggregated proteins are important or refolding them into native conformation is important so this is known as proteostasis any problem in any of these steps of this pathway can lead to cellular damage and cellular aging so that is why disrupted proteostasis is a hallmark of cellular aging another hallmark that or another driver that lead to cellular aging is reactive oxygen species reactive oxygen species can can act on proteins and lipids they can they can oxidize lipid and lead to lipid peroxidation which damages the membrane eventually they can also lead to damage in the protein they can alter the protein structure thereby altering the protein's functionality moreover ros can also create double stranded dna damage and that lead to a overall problem in genome instability all this thing uh, leads to a vicious cycle that triggers the cellular aging process so overall in this video we looked at the key drivers or physiological traits that regulate cellular aging process so i hope this video was informative and good enough if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe you can support our channel using super thanks see you in next video